Shakira was infamous because Shakira was a She really made her name for herself and was not going to back down from it. She was never, ever, ever going to stop. Yeah, he wanted to be her boyfriend. She just felt like he was trying to set her up. And that's what she told me. She like, I think he just trying to me. It's still under investigation what exactly happened Friday afternoon in the 6400 block of South Eberhardt. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gunman started. When the bullet hit, it was so powerful, she fell on the Residents who do not want to be identified say Barnes fought to live, but had been shot at least nine times. In the jaw, in the neck, and in the chest, and in the leg. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. When two shooters have it out for each other, who wins? In this case, the shooters are King Von and K.I. If you've been following my channel, you know who came out on top. But how did they get there? What events led to their paths down a collision course where one would catch a body and elude the feds after being labeled the main suspect? So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. When you hear the name King Von, you automatically think of O-Block. And when you hear K.I.'s name, you think of Tukaville. The two of them were that huge and two of the most notorious fractions in Chirac. Often referred to as a female hitman, K.I. was a monster that inflicted fear in her ops. Von was the Chirac demon. He lived up to that name, dropping bodies like it was his hobby, allegedly. His story started out like many other youngers in the streets of Chirac, surrounded by the influences of the hood. Von was out on the streets, banging with other savages like Chief Keith and the Grim Reaper himself, Lil Reese. K.I. was no different. Hell, being a girl recognized and respected in the streets, you know she was something serious. Imagine both of them being on the same side. That would have been a villain duo that's damn near extinction level threats to the ops, maybe even the police. But destiny shuffled their cards and dealt them a hand to balance the equation. Each of their sets were rivals. The Wick City, a.k.a. O-Block, versus STLEVT, a.k.a. Tukaville beef, has deep roots, and you can learn about how it began on a previous video I did. But what really set these two down a path of destruction with such hate for each other? Most agree that that infamous hit on STLEVT respected member Tuka on January 12, 2011, at a bus stop on the 600 block of East 63rd Street set things in motion. STL crazy! You already know. This let the female assassin loose on the O, on a mission to get back for the loss of who was a close friend. That day would come just a few months later when she allegedly finally caught her old block star O.D. Perry on August 10th, 2011, murking him with multiple shots, one of which pierced through his neck. But she didn't stop there. She went on to insult the fallen O block member by taking his strap and posting it up online, then mocking his passing in a series of disrespectful tweets. And just like that, the stage was set for what would become a battlefield with her and Vaughn. It was clear that K.I. was more prone to flexing online than Vaughn. Not that he didn't, but she was known for admiring her handiwork on Twitter talking her ops. Her and Vaughn would develop a strange love-hate relationship, at one moment seeming to have feelings for each other. The next, they were on demon time out to catch the other slipping. But while many were fooled, K.I. wasn't. Vaughn probably might have really smashed, but then put a bullet through her head. In a documentary that aired on A&E after her passing, K.I.'s friend revealed that K.I. was on the Vaughn's plot to trick her and to soften her up, only to end her life. He liked her as a girlfriend? Yeah, he wanted to be her boyfriend. She just felt like he was trying to set her up and kill her. That's what she told me. She's like, I think he's just trying to He don't like me. What's the like? The back and forth were like enemies playing with each other to hide the real message in public's eye. That disguised love-hate relationship slowly tilted towards hate the more their rivalry went on. Bodies were dropping and getting close to home. There's only with so much loss someone can take before reaching the point of no return. And that became the case when K.I. took the life of King Bond's homie, J. Money, allegedly. K.I. and the affiliate caught J. Money lacking on September 2nd, 2013. J. Money was allegedly set up, believing he was meeting up with a girl in the 6600 block of South Rhodes Avenue in Woodlawn, but instead was greeted with bullets to the head and body by K.I. and her homie, allegedly. K.I. in usual savage manner did something that would push Vaughn over the edge. This is where a lot of people get information mixed up. K.I. not only bragged about her body, but she would go on to post to Vaughn and rubbing it in his face that she took out his homie while he was locked up. Vaughn would respond, reminded her that O-Block up the score right back on her homies as well. This is where things get mixed up a lot. 
Many people think that this point was when Vaughn was locked up for murdering the dude named Malcolm Stucky, allegedly, after catching him at a birthday party in the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street around Inglewood. But this shooting involving Vaughn and his homie Michael Wade happened in May of 2014, while the tweets were dated back February of 2014, which means that that's not what Vaughn was behind bars for at the time. The most recent arrest before that on file with Vaughn was in November, December of 2012, when he was arrested and booked in Cook County for unlawful possession of a firearm. So this could be what he was now being free from. K.I.'s jab at Vaughn for losing his homie while behind bars was the last straw. Vaughn was ready to put an end to their robbery and on April 11th, 2014, allegedly, him and another old block member made their move after K.I. posted up her location on Twitter. Seems back then, gangsters fell for the same mistake of doing too much online. She was allegedly with her right-hand man and homie Butter. When Vaughn pulled up, offloaded shots, hitting K.I. in the mouth, neck, and chest a total of nine times on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt Avenue. Eyewitnesses state that K.I. ran and collapsed on the porch fighting for her life. But neighbors say Barnes and a friend were walking along the sidewalk when a gun started when the bullet hit him so powerful she fell on the step residents who do not want to be identified say Barnes fought to live but had been shot at least nine times in the jaw in the neck and in chest and in the leg they all was succumb to her injuries at Northwestern Memorial Hospital shorty was a real trooper to the very end for real Vaughn was always pointed out as the main suspect by everyone, but he was never charged for the crime. K.I.'s homie Butter later slipped up and stated that it was Vaughn who shot and killed K.I. in trying to clear his name for snitching rooms. Sadly, Vaughn himself would meet his end after an altercation with Quando Rondo outside a club in Atlanta where Quando's homie Lil' Tim pulled out the strap and hit him up. What's even crazier is after both K.I. and Vaughn passed, documents popped up from law enforcement that in fact lists Vaughn as one of the people who ended K.I.'s life. Apparently, somebody did a FOIA request, which is the Freedom of Information Act. This states that the public has access to information on the activities of the government and can request a copy of any document from a public authority, such as a government ministry, department, or statutory body. The documents extended to 300 pages, but the important parts that show Vaughn as the shooter is what we all pay attention to. The reports state that K.I. was with two other people at 6451 South Eberhard Street when a male in a gray hoodie and blue jeans approached and opened fire with a handgun hitting each of them before before hopping in the vehicle and dipping. It then went on to state that an investigation was conducted afterwards that pinned Davon Bennett, AKA King Vaughn, as the shooter and in turn the killer of K.I. Further, it states that the Cook County State's Attorney's Office reviewed the investigation and agreed that Vaughn was positively ID'd as the shooter. So why then was he free and not locked up? Pretty simple answer according to the report. The state attorney's office didn't believe that they had enough evidence that would stick and be able to close the case. So the case was dropped and Vaughn was never arrested for the hit of K.I., even if they knew he was the one that pulled the trigger. The report also confirmed what I was stating earlier about Vaughn not being arrested for Malcolm Stuckey's hit in February of 2014 because he was charged later for the hit on Malcolm, who died on May 29th, which was even after K.I. was hit up. But check this. There's another angle to this as well. I got to thinking because the report does state that witnesses related to the victim were present and gave details, but in the breakdown of what played out, the report then stated that only three people were at the particular location, which was K.I. and two others. We know one is Butter because he confirmed he was shot too. So is it that one of them snitched to the feds about Vaughn being the shooter? Because they seem that their witnesses knew it was Vaughn. If so, the dudes might have flipped to save their own lives from something they may have been under pressure for with the law. Either way, it's all a thought in the mind, you know?